Hey everybody, Professor Klein here to bring you a video on the Atlas, the Axis, and the other cervical vertebrae. Let's begin. All right, so when we're talking about the Atlas, what I'm talking about here is the first vertebrae, C1. There's seven cervical vertebrae, as you can see on this model, and the first one sits way up here, right underneath the skull, and we call that the atlas. Now underneath that, you gotta kind of swing it down this way. You can see C2, which we call the axis. Now those are smashed together with some arteries and a nerve in there, but let's look at them individually as we can see right here. You'll notice these two, atlas on the right, axis on the left, are distinctly different than the other cervical vertebrae. So we're gonna cover each one here in sequence, starting with the atlas. Now, what you'll notice, and I've got this from a superior view here, so the skull would sit right on these grooves. Now I'm gonna swing it down. I want you to notice these grooves are kind of U-shaped. Let me see if I can get it from the side here. There we go, see how they're U-shaped? Now the skull, if we bring a skull in here, sits right on top of that, right on these bony landmarks, called the occipital condyles. Now these, see, these are the opposite of the U-shape and would fit perfectly into right here. These are called the superior articulating processes. Additionally, we've got some arches. We've got the anterior arch and the posterior arch. Anterior smaller, posterior larger. In addition to that, coming off the sides, this entire bony landmark here is called a transverse process. One on the left, one on the right. But what's unique about the cervical vertebrae, and even on the axis, you can see that in a normal cervical vertebrae, are these holes. These holes are called transverse foramen, and it's what the vertebral artery travels through. What else we got here? Well, not much actually. Let me flip it over to an inferior view. So now we're looking at it from bottom up and notice how you have something similar but these are called the inferior articulating processes and they're more smooth all right let's move from the atlas to the axis and you can see one prominent thing that's unique to the axis here it's called the dens the dens is this giant bump in the front still has a superior articulating process on both sides. A smaller transverse process right here still with a hole for that vertebral artery. But then you start to see some more prominent things like the lamina. The lamina is this part right here and here as it bridges back to this spinous process. This is a new one for the axis. See how this bone kind of protrudes posteriorly versus over here, we didn't really have that. It would be here where the probe is right now, but it's not. Just have a posterior arch. This one's got a spinous process coming back with lamina connecting to the rest of the body. And speaking of the body, this one has a vertebral body. So this is the vertebral body right here, inferior to the dens. Now if I flip this one, you're also going to see some of the bumps on the bottom. And those are called the inferior articulating process. Now, what do the processes do? Well, if I bring this in, and it's key to note, anterior, smaller arch, dens, anterior and let me flip this over so it's proper flat 
flat, they're gonna fit just like that. And notice how, if I turn this, and notice how the inferior articulating process of the atlas articulates with the superior articulating process of the axis, forming the facet joint. So here you can see the facet joint, also called the zygophysial joint. That's where the movement occurs on the vertebrae. Let's finish this video by talking about what C3 through C7 would look like. Pretty similar to that axis, but no dense, just a larger vertebral body. Transverse process, transverse process with a transverse foramen. Come back here, you can see the superior articulating process and the inferior articulating process from an inferior view. Additionally, you've got the lamina on either side leading back to the spinous process. One more thing to down here that the other ones really didn't have is something called a pedicle. Pedicle is this little bridge between the vertebral body and the transverse processes over here. So this would be the pedicle, one on either side. And one final thing to mention about all these, the big hole in the middle is called the vertebral foramen. Vertebral foramen and vertebral foramen. If you stack these on top of each other, all those vertebral foramen become what's called the vertebral canal, a much longer hole. There we go. And this has been your video on the atlas, the axis, and the cervical vertebrae. Thanks for watching.